Welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report, where we talk about classical Kung Fu's application. Today we're going to talk about the Pak So, but with the pole known as the Pak One. And we're going to go against a forward stab and work on some of the elements to make it work in application. See you when we get back. Alright guys, Chris sir, please come in. So, in a few episodes back when we were learning uh, a lot of basic strikes, Today we're going to talk about what to do against an attack with the six and a half point four basic strikes. Usually we start just like empty hand, we learn how to defend against center line attacks first instead of the round attacks. The stick is no different. The reason being, you want to develop the habit of, of occupying the center line. If you learn what to do against swing first from a classical Wing Chun point of view, you're actually subconsciously building the habit of chasing corners, which means in the future you might run the risk of falling for fakes. It is better to get a one-track mind to occupy the center first. That at least is the third. That being the case, if Chris stabs me, right? Go ahead, Chris. So that's the basic strike we're going to learn again. So it could be the sword plex, the sternum, the throat, or the head. You should be patting the end of the stick if you're going to go fast, and also try not to go for the head unless you're going for the helmet. So you want to keep safety measures in mind, and of course don't use a spear. So that being said, when a guy is stabbing you, the first thing you want to learn is, can you stab again, please Chris? Is you want to learn how to look at the guy's arms and the guy's body. You don't want to focus on the stick. A pull is very, very slow, but you want this stuff to work not just against the pull, but also against spears, axe, swords, and so forth. A sword's really, really fast. So if you develop the habit of looking at the stick, it's too fast for the eye. You want to look at the guy's arms and also look at the guy's body to tell you where he's stabbing and what angle of attack it is. That way it enhances your reflex. Second reason why you don't want to look at the pole is, again, this must work on everything, right? If this is a long saber and it's a really sharp weapon, if I make the habit of looking at the saber, it's going to suck my mind into it, right? I'm going to get psyched out. I mean, a lot of guys are brave when they're playing with toys, but as long as it's a real blade, they get scared and then they freeze. So you don't want to build that habit. You want to put the habit of looking at the slower part. The limbs and the body will tell me exactly where he's stabbing anyways. Now when he stabs me, I don't want to redirect him by swiping, because if I swipe wide, I'm leaving myself wide open. That's why we use the pot one instead of a swiping. Then we shorten the pot one into something very short. So when Chris stabs me again, I want to just move a little bit to redirect the stick. Look where my stick is. I didn't commit wide. Second thing is, drop the stick for a second, Chris. If Chris's arm is out for a second, using one arm is some way to pull, right? This is just like basic empty hand wing chin. If I pox on the guy's wrist, it's really dumb because he can easily disengage. See? What I want to do is take the elbow, or at least close to the elbow. That way he can't move his arm. And I also shut off the other one, right? So it's the same with the pull. Like this grab the stick. This is like the fist. This is like the shoulder. This is like the elbow. What I want to do when I redirect the stick is make sure I hit the elbow. Because when Chris stabs me, if I go and move the tip of the stick, which is really dumb, Chris can easily hit me by disengaging. So I don't want to mess with this, it's too fast, right? So I want to take the elbow area of the stick. So when Chris stabs, I want to take the elbow area, and now the stick goes really wide. That leaves him open so I can attack the throat or the head or the body, it doesn't matter. If for some reason the stick doesn't go wide, then I want to make sure I'm able to use short power to hit and break the arm or the wrist. In our last resort, I want to use the gun to slam the pole down if the stick doesn't go far. That way I don't have to guess where the next attack is. But most importantly, when we learn a pull, we're going to be really stiff like this, right? When we do the form and the safe knock. But as you get better, you actually want to shorten everything so you're more agile because when he does stack, I want to do the side step too and hit. I don't want to stay there. Just in case I miss when he stack, at least I'm out of the way, even if I don't block. So that's your insurance, right? So you take the elbow, you look at the hand, you size it, and you attack at the closest weapon. If you need to, check the stick again, right? So those are some of the concepts. All right, when we get back, we'll talk more about this. 
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Just a review, one of the most important things is when we're learning against countering against another weapon in a six and a half point pull, we want to go against a center line attack first, so instead of checking the corners. Checking the corners is really fun, so everyone usually try to start there, but that's actually building a bad habit. Start up with the boring stabbing motion, counter that. Once you can do that properly, then work on what to do against swings, and that's how the course is designed. It's really hard to go through all this. That's why I'm kind of rushing today. But there's many, many elements you have to put in place to make that work because the pull is really heavy and it's very slow. Fighting with a slow weapon puts you in a disadvantage. And that's why these elements are very important. And more importantly, these elements actually directly translate to the knives. The Wing Chun knives, as you should see later when I start forming level six. Anyways, if you're interested in learning how to actually do this, we have a course on this on our website. I'm ChenKungFu.com in the full immersion program. All right, guys, train on and stay safe. See you next time.